Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Today I want to go over some of the techniques involved in using Revit as a conceptual modeling tool. So what I'm going to do to start off with is show you the two different ways that you can do this. Uh, you, can, you can do it one way, which is by opening a conceptual mass RFT. So you'll notice I, I click on the new icon here and just go to conceptual mass. And there's a template in here that we can use. One of the ways that you'll know that you're in a conceptual modeling template right off the bat is it opens up in this 3D view that has like a grayish white gradient background. So this is a family that we load into a project. And then the other way is if we come over here and we create a new project, you can create masses in place. So an in-place mass is essentially a mass that you're going to use in one project only. So if I go to massing in site, you'll notice that we have place mass, which goes back to the mass families that we were just taking a look at. Or we can say in-place mass, which is going to ask me to name it, and then we go about creating the mass. So if I call this sample in place and hit OK, we'll see our ribbon changes to the mass editor which will allow us to start creating uh, an in-place mass. So I'm gonna leave this B for the time being. I'm just gonna actually say cancel mass and leave this project open for the time being. And then I'm gonna switch back over to the family one 3D view that we started. So the first thing that you might wanna do is set up a, a mass framework or a, a parametric framework that you can start to commit parameters to. And these will help you define the shape, the, the size, any of the dimensions that you might need in your, in your project. And so we'll do this with instance parameters first. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to my level one and I'm gonna start drawing in some reference planes. So I go up here to reference plane under the create tab or type RP. And I'm just going to draw in four reference planes on either side of these origin planes that we already have in here. And you'll notice that I'm not connecting these. I don't want these points to come to the same spot like this. Uh, the reason being is if I grab one of these points to extend this, I, I don't wanna have to tab cycle to get one specific reference plane. So I leave these disconnected. And if you like, what you can do is click on here where it says click to name or come over here where it says name as well. So just going over these um, origin planes a little bit, if I click on this one, you'll see that this one's already named center front back. Okay, so I can assume that this one here is going to be my back plane. I'm just gonna go to the 3D view just to make sure. Okay, so you can see that I've got this one that I've just drawn, it's my unnamed. And then if I, use the view cube you can see that the one here at the bottom would represent the front okay so if this one's center back front i'm going to name this one back and then i'm going to come to this one and name this one front same as these two i'll call this one left and i'll call this one here right so now i have named planes and when I go to set a reference plane to draw something on, you can see that under placement plane, I'll have those named planes now that I can pick from my pick list. So that's something there that's uh, kind of handy. You don't have to name these planes, but if you don't name them, then you're going to have to pick them from the options when you go to set your reference plane. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is I would set up some dimension constraints that will allow me to create geometry and lock the faces of the geometry to these reference planes. So if I go back to my level one view here, you can see my dimension tool becomes active. And if I click on that, what I'm going to do is put a dimension that goes all the way across and I'm going to hit my EQ toggle. So what that does is lets me make sure that any dimension that I input for my parameter for this guy right here it's going to be equal on both sides. So now that I have that parameter in there, uh, or sorry, that dimension in there, you'll notice that when I select it, I get my options to create a parameter up here. In 2016 and any Revit further back, this label would have appeared down here in the options bar. 
So this is something new here in 2017 is it's gone into the extended ribbon. So to create that parameter, what I'm gonna do is click on this button right here, and then you'll notice it brings up a dialog box. So because I'm going to this from a, a dimension a dimension itself in the model space, you can see that the discipline type of parameter and the group is all kind of set up here already for me. So I'm just gonna call this one mass width, and I'm gonna change that to an instance parameter and hit okay. So now you can see I've got mass width at 208. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here, a string, hit the EQ toggle, and then I'm gonna do a full dimension that goes all the way. Okay, so you won't be able to create these uh, parameters. If we grab these guys here, I don't wanna create parameters for the string. I wanna create the parameter for the full dimension. So now I'm gonna do, uh, go in here and type in mass length, change that to instance. Okay, so now I have my uh, parametric framework set up for the horizontal dimensions, but to get a height parameter in here, the next thing I'm going to do is go to any elevation view and just hit, uh, just double click on those. So you can see I've got my length parameter in here, but now what I wanna do is draw another reference plane that's gonna go across the top. So I'll just draw that in. And we could name this one, we could call this top, or mass top, I guess. And I'll leave it at that. And um, I'm gonna do the same thing here hit the dimension, I don't need an equality uh, dimension in here, I just need the one dimension. So back here, we'll call this mass height. Uh, okay, so we'll change that to an instance and we'll hit okay. So now we can start creating the geometry, but before I do that, what I wanna do is flex my framework and make sure that these things are working. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the 3D view here and just change that to an isometric view so that I can see these. And you'll notice that the planes that I've created, these user planes, they're, they're up here at the top, but when you hover over them, you can see a representation of that plane. Okay, now when you select these, you can expand them. You can make them a little bit longer if you need to, but I'm just gonna leave them as is for the time being. And I probably don't want to see these dimensions in this view. I just, I'm just going to want to see my reference uh, geometry and the, the actual geometry that I create. So what I'm going to do is hit VV to control my visibility. And I'm going to move over here to annotation categories and just uncheck dimensions. And this way, when I'm working in 3D, I'm just looking at geometry and not the actual parameters. I'm gonna worry about my parameters in the orthographic views.